Good morning and welcome to Henderson Presbyterian Church's at-home worship service for this first Sunday in the month of June, June the 7th, 2020, Trinity Sunday, another special day in the church calendar. We are so glad that you have come to join us. It is a wonderful time to be able to worship God together, even though we are physically apart, we are spiritually together. Let us start this morning with our call to worship. Welcome this day to a celebration of God's magnificent creation. We give thanks to God the Creator who has loaned to us such a beautiful planet. Welcome this day to a recognition of God's redeeming love. We give thanks to Jesus Christ, God's Son, who has given to us as our example and teacher, our Savior and Redeemer. Welcome this day to the joy of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth and power. We give thanks to the Holy Spirit who walks with us every day, guiding and guarding our steps. Let us pray. Eternal God, your Spirit moved on the waters and there was light, your first creation. Your Spirit moved on the water of our baptism and again there was light in our souls and hearts. Let your holy light shine on us as we worship you today. Amen. Let us continue worshiping God with our praise song, Awesome God, followed by the hymn, Holy, 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 and then Jesus Loves Me, which is just before our children's message, Buddy, the Tricycle, the Trinity. Let us worship God.
Good morning, buddy. Hi, Pastor Lee. How are you today? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing okay. What, what, what's this thing? What do you mean, what's this thing? This, this thing I'm sitting on. Is it some kind of a bicycle? No, it's not a bicycle, but it's kind of like one. It's called a tricycle. A, what do you mean a tricycle? What's a tricycle? Well, a tricycle is a thing that a person rides that has three wheels. Like tri means three. Oh, so it's different than a bicycle. Yeah, a bicycle, bi, means two. So it has two wheels. Oh, okay. But why did you bring it to church? Well, I brought it to church because I wanted to talk about the Trinity. What's that? What's the Trinity? Well, the Trinity is about who God is. What do you mean? Well, God has three persons. Oh, you mean like there's three gods? Oh, oh no, no, no. Not three gods. It's one God. But there's three kind of persons that all work together. Like, like how? Well, there's God the Father, there's God the Son, that's Jesus, and there's God the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, you talked about the Holy Spirit last week with my new friend Debbie the Dove. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he's pretty cool. I like Debbie the Dove. Oh, thank you, yes. He's, he's a nice dove. Yes, he is. He's pretty cool. Yes. And so when we think about the tricycle, hey, uh, Pastor Lee, uh, yes. Uh, where did you get this? Well, we got it a long time ago. My wife and I did when our son was really little. Oh, okay. Yeah, and our son and our daughter has ridden it, and actually our three grandchildren, all three of them have ridden the tricycle. Oh, wow. It's been around a long time then. Yes, it has. It's pretty neat. Yes, it is pretty neat. Oh, sorry, sorry I interrupted. Okay. And but anyway, when we talk about the Trinity, we have God the Father, we have God the Son, and we have God the Holy Spirit. They all work together. Oh, let, let, let me guess. Uh, God the Father, he's the one that created everything. You're right. Yeah, God the Son, you said he was Jesus. Yeah, and he went to the cross and died for us and for all our sins. You're right. Yeah, and then, of course, last week you talked about the Holy Spirit that guides us and protects us and comforts us and does all kinds of things. You're right. You're really good at remembering things. Yeah, but, you know, I think it's pretty cool that we think about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit because they all work for us. You're right. Just kind of like the tricycle. You need all three parts. If you have a tricycle and one wheel falls off, it doesn't work. You're right. So in, in, the, in the Trinity, you need all three parts. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You're right. You really got it, buddy. You really got it figured out. Yeah, well, I want all the kids to get it figured out, too. That's pretty neat. We should pray about it. Yes, we should. Would you like to pray today? Sure, I'll pray today. Dear God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we ask you, Lord, to live in us, be with us, guide us, direct us. All those that are listening, all those kids, young and old, to be with them and to guide them and love them and direct their paths and make yourself known to them. We pray this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for that prayer. You're welcome. I want everybody to learn to pray because it's so, so important. Yes, it is. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you enjoy riding the tricycle. Oh yeah, I think this will be really cool. Yeah, I think it will be too. Let's now have this morning's tithes and offerings given to God the Father, God the Son, 
and God the Holy Spirit to guide us and to give us support here in this church and do what he calls us to do. continue to support your church in all that we do by mailing in your offering or tithe. You may mail it to our post office box, 91346, Henderson, Nevada, 89009, or you may even drop it off at the church on Tuesday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Please call the church first at 702-565-9684. Let us know that you will be coming to the church that way we will be looking for the offering as you drop it through the slot in the door just outside the office. You may also support the Pentecost offering, a special offering of our denomination where a portion of the offering stays at our church for youth ministries. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, bless these gifts that they may be used for your purposes only Bless those that offer the gifts, that their gifts and their lives are in obedience to what you are calling them to do. For we offer ourselves and our gifts to you. Amen. At this time of prayer, we ask you to be especially in prayer for our session and the session of the Filipino Church. They will be meeting later this week to just continue the discussion about reopening for God's guidance and direction and all that needs to be done to keep both congregations safe physically as well as and most importantly spiritually. I also ask you to pray for our world, our country, our state and our city for reconciliation and peace and times of protests and differences of opinion to ask God to guide them to be with them and pray that they will seek God's guidance and direction and not their own wishes and desires. For when God's people come to God in prayer, then amazing things happen. We've read about it throughout the Bible and we know that that is a fact. And that is what we pray for our nation and for our world today. So let us go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you, Lord, that you are a wonderful God who sent your Son to the earth for us, who sent the Holy Spirit to live within us and among us. For only, Lord, when we come to you or we able to succeed in anything, to be guided by you and by you alone. Lord, we pray for our congregations, for their health, whether it be coronavirus or other health concerns, and especially for their spiritual health, 
of the time that we're not able to get together physically, I pray that each one's spiritual health is getting stronger and stronger as they depend more and more on you, but it's what we really need to do anyway in our lives. Pray, Lord, that all those that we encounter, our families, our friends, neighbors, co-workers, any others, that they will see you when they see us. Lord, we pray for the session of our church and the session of the First Filipino American Presbyterian Church regarding reopening. May you be with them as they meet and guide them in the steps needed for the physical safety of our church members and attendees and to be with them in their goals and outreaches and all that they do. We Lord, Lord, we pray for our Henderson, Las Vegas area, our state, our country, and the world. For your touching of their lives in profound ways whether it be the COVID-19 virus that has affected many people or other health concerns as well. And it's also, especially as we read so many times, as we look at the news, that we pray, Lord, for peace and reconciliation that can only come from you. We pray that all will seek your guidance and we pray for you to guide all those that are in authority that they may seek an understanding and, and a direction from you. For you are the God of love. You are the God of peace. And we know, Lord, that if God's people seek you, humble themselves and bow down to you, that all things will work together for all those that love you. Lord, at this time, we also take a time to confess our sins, whether they be sins of words, actions, or thoughts. None of them are pleasing to you, and if they affect others, they're not pleasing to them either. We ask you, Lord, to hear us as we lift our prayers of confession to you, for you are a holy God and desire to hear your people and to be in communion with them. Let us have just a moment of silence as we lift our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Thank you, God. You're so gracious to hear us. And so gracious to forgive us, to pardon us for our sins. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the love that you have for us. And now let us continue in our prayers as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We will now have a special anthem by Adrian and Marissa Mondo, a piano duet. They will be playing Bach's Musette in G major. Thank you. 
Thank you, Adrian and Marissa. It was a wonderful anthem that you shared with us this morning. Thanks again. Our first scripture passage for this morning is the entire Psalm 8, verses 1 through 9, written well over 2,000 years ago. Let us hear the words as written by the psalmist. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet, you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. May God bless a reading from his word this morning. Thanks be to God. The second passage is from one of Paul's letters, 2 Corinthians as we know it. I will be reading the very end of this letter, chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the words of our Lord endure forever. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for these two passages. We ask you, Lord, to open our hearts that we may understand what you have for us this morning. And Lord, if there is anything that is between us and you, we ask you, Lord, to take it so we can focus on you and what you have for us. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. There is a story about a little girl that was sitting on the table in, on her, in her Sunday school room, and she was drawing on a piece of paper with some crayons. The teacher asked her, what are you drawing? The little girl, without even looking up at the teacher, said, I'm drawing a picture of God. The teacher said, but, but nobody knows what God looks like. The little girl, still very diligently drawing with her crayon, said, they will when I'm finished. I think we all want to know what God looks like. To draw a picture of God, to know what God looks like, to know what God is all about, is one of the things that church is all about. Today is Trinity Sunday, the Sunday after Pentecost, 
This is a day we celebrate the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Of all the theological concepts there are, the Trinity is probably the hardest to comprehend. How are we to be putting things in order regarding the Trinity? I am going to give us some ideas this morning. We sang Holy, Holy, Holy a little earlier in the service. This song screams out almost the, the Trinity. God in three persons, Holy Trinity. When we think about the Trinity in its separate parts or persons, they are easily understood. It's pretty easy to think of God the Father. God the Father as the creator of this incredible universe that we live in. We can pretty easily understand God the Son, Jesus Christ. He came to earth, was crucified, buried, rose from the dead and ascended back to the Father. He is our Lord and Savior, and he is our Redeemer. Last week I spoke about the sending of the Holy Spirit to the first believers on Pentecost. The Holy Spirit comes to us and speaks to us in a multitude of ways. The Spirit comes to us individually when we need him. He comes to us collectively when we worship together. We ask him to be with us, to guide us as we look into God's word, the Bible. We call the Holy Spirit our counselor, friend, guide, and many other names or descriptions. But when we get to the Trinity, we look into all three as one God, not the individual parts that I have mentioned. Some people have attempted to describe the Trinity in a number of ways. Some have said that the Trinity is like water in its three phases of ice and steam and liquid. Others have said that the Trinity is like the same person with three different titles, like I'm a father, a son, and a brother all at the same time. Others have compared the Trinity to a cherry pie that is cut in three pieces, but the insides, the middle, the filling, all run together as one. Others have explained the Trinity using the mathematical formula one times one times one equals one. Although they are attempts at making sense of the Trinity, none of these are really adequate. The word Trinity is not found in the Bible anywhere. It was a word used by one of the early church fathers to describe God since there are three persons within the Godhead. There are several verses that speak to these three persons. A few of these are John 14, 26, where Jesus himself said, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you all that I have said to you. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians 1, verse 17, I pray that God, or the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. The writer to the Hebrews in chapter 9 verse 14 wrote, How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God? And from the Great Commission, given by Jesus just prior to his ascension that we read at the end of Matthew's Gospel. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches us that God lives in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Each person is equal in stature to the others. We must not confuse the Father with the Son or the Son with the Spirit. The Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Spirit. But how is God three and one at the same time? And who do we pray to? Can we pray to Jesus as well as the Father? 
God is one and God is three. God is here. God is everywhere. God is spirit. And God took on flesh. Saying that there are three persons in the Godhead leads some people to think that there are three gods who work in partnership. This is called tritheism, three gods, or pantheism, or polytheism, many gods, opposed to monotheism, one god. The doctrine of the Trinity is like a riddle to some people. The standard formula goes in this order, as I said several times this morning, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's how it's almost always said. That's what we say when a person is baptized, using Jesus' formula that I read earlier in the Great Commission, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But how it works is just the opposite. First, we are grabbed by the Holy Spirit who, who leads us to Jesus, and then Jesus restores us to God the Father. We can't worship the Father and ignore the Son. We can't worship Jesus and forget the Spirit. And we can't worship the Holy Spirit and overlook the Father. All three are essential in our worship. If a Christian, or a church or a denomination for that matter, focuses more on one person of the Trinity compared to the others, they will be out of balance. Each person is to be considered equal. For example, one of these errors can be called the Holy Spirit error. Several modern movements emphasize the work of the Holy Spirit to the exclusion of the other two. These movements focus on the filling of the Holy Spirit, but too much or exclusive emphasis on the Holy Spirit is dangerous and creates a lopsided form of Christianity. The Holy Spirit is sometimes called the quiet member of the Trinity. By this I mean that the Spirit diverts attention from itself to Jesus. Another problem is, is when we focus on Jesus only with God the Father and the Holy Spirit basically ignored. It's a me and Jesus thing. I've seen some people write on Facebook that they're going to church to get their Jesus on. But Christianity is not just about Jesus. It's not just about a personal Savior. When people come to Jesus, he points them away from himself to the Father, just as the Spirit points away from himself to the Son. Jesus said in John 12, 49, For I have not spoken on my own, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak. We need to look at the big picture to see Jesus in relationship to the Father and in his relationship to the Holy Spirit. And third, we cannot have a faith that is based on God alone. One of the issues with this type of faith is that God can become impersonal and removed from us. God can become more like a vengeful God you have to shield your eyes from. Without including Jesus and the Holy Spirit, our faith becomes very one-sided. It is not a complete faith. In the final verse of Paul's second letter to the Corinthian church, he wrote a very clear benediction that I read just prior to this message, but I'd like to say it again. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All of the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Paul wrote his letter long before the church developed the formal doctrine of the Trinity. He said goodbye with a prayer for the presence in the lives of the Corinthians of the grace that finds its source in Christ and the love that God inspires and the partnership of life that the Holy Spirit creates. Another way we can look at the Trinity is what God, Jesus, 
and the Holy Spirit do. The three persons of the Trinity do different things. They have different responsibilities, so to speak. God works for us by his love. First of all, he created us. In his own image, he created us. He created the universe for us to enjoy. He has provided for us everything we need for our individual needs. He made himself known to Moses in the burning bush, as well as on the mountain with the Ten Commandments. He guided the Israelites to the Promised Land, providing all they needed during their 40 years in the wilderness. He was with the judges, the kings, and the prophets throughout the Old Testament, even when they were disobedient. He sent down fire from heaven to consume the sacrifice that the prophet Elijah put together on Mount Carmel when he confronted the prophets of Baal. He loves us, ultimately by sending his son to die for our sin. God is love, as we read in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 38 and 39, where we have these reassuring words. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus Christ works in us by his grace. The grace given to us, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, as mentioned in the benediction in 2 Corinthians, has been explained using the acronym G-R-A-C-E that I use many times. God's riches at Christ's expense. This grace is what saves us from our sin. This grace is a gift given to us by Christ. Through the example of his life on the earth, through his crucifixion on the cross, through his resurrection, and through his ascension. Jesus' life was a life of grace to all those he encountered, even when he was mistreated by those that opposed him. The Holy Spirit works in us by his communion with us. When the Holy Spirit is given to Christians, it immediately begins to work in us. The Holy Spirit is always with us, communing with us, fellowshipping with us. This fellowship is at an individual level as well as communal, communally within the church itself. It is the Holy Spirit that keeps the church working together rather than being pulled apart. Earlier in the message, I gave several ways the Trinity has been explained. None of these fully explain the three persons of the, the Godhead. The mathematical formula for the three persons of the Trinity isn't one times one times one equals one that I mentioned earlier. This isn't common core math. It is Trinity math. One plus one plus one equals one. Yes, it is a mystery. These distinct persons working together as one. It is because of the workings of God that we have faith and the desire to follow him in our lives. The Trinity is present with us at all times, personally and as the church. So let us live as people that are thankful for the many things the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit have done for and especially in us. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your Son. Thank you for you. Help us, Lord, to live as people that desire to follow what you have for us in our lives. This we pray in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to the Lord's table, as we remember the 
this last supper that Jesus celebrated with his disciples just before his ultimate death on the cross and being arrested, etc. We think about the Trinity being present with us as we celebrate. God sent his son to be the only sacrifice needed for our sin. Jesus, of course, said, do this in remembrance of me when we break the bread and drink the cup, the bread of his body and the cup of his blood. We ask the Holy Spirit to be with us as we take the elements. The Trinity is very much a part of our lives. Our lives as Christians, our lives as believers, followers in God. So let us thank God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Jesus told his disciples to take bread and, and that he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And then he took the cup and as he poured the cup, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. These are times to celebrate, celebrate what God has done. God, what he has done in each and every one of us. What he has done to give us new life. This is a time of celebrating. So when we think about the Lord's Supper, let us celebrate what God has done for us. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this Lord's Supper as we think about and remember what you have done for us. We ask you, Lord, to guide us, comfort us, direct our paths, do in all that we do may it be pleasing to you and it can be when we fully focus on you this we pray in jesus name amen let us now sing our closing hymn our final hymn come thou almighty king God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit has touched your heart this morning. You would like to know more about having a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord. God is your Father. And the Holy Spirit to live within you. Give me a call at 
9684, extension 6. If I'm not there, leave a message. I will get back to you. It's a wonderful life to follow Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Have the Holy Spirit living within you. And following and loving the loving God. So now, let us have this morning's benediction. I've said it two times already, but I think it's very important that we really listen one more time, pray one more time. These last three verses of Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. This is the blessing that I want to leave with you, the benediction that I want to leave with you this morning. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal. Agree with one another, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will, will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Let us now sing our closing hymn. God be with you. And may God bless you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit on this Trinity Sunday. And of course, throughout your life. Let us praise God for what he has done. Amen. <laughs>